Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland. You're watching Video Voters Guide. We're here with the support of Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Mary Ann Schwab, running for Portland City Commissioner, Position 1. Welcome, Mary Ann. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Please tell us about yourself. What do you, why are you running for this office? Go ahead. I am running for this office because I feel that we, so far, the city council is not really working for us. I'm talking about most Portlanders. And I think we really need to address that. And the reason I'm running is um, I'm here for children and I'm here for the elderly. We need to address their needs as well. Thank you very much. Thinking about the situation that we're in right now and the resulting devastation from the pandemic, devastation of small business, city employee layoffs, housing displacement, these will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Well, I, uh, personally, I started by making a donation to the Portland Impact Transportation Services for the Elderly shut-in for medical appointments. And I have witnessed um, unhoused displacement on my street when a neighbor opened her house so that a woman wouldn't be uh, unhoused. And albeit when I'm elected, I'll join voices with the city, county, and metro to open the um, Bybee Lakes Home Center, Wapico. And I'm told the TriMet board is ready to reroute the bus to serve that campus. In addition, the small businesses and city employees um, to offset the, the um, revenue shortage from the gas tax, the downtown parking garages, the hotel room taxes, parking meetings, even golf courses. The time has come for police officers to start ticketing vehicles, parking at driveways next to fire hydrants, close to crossworks, and worse, park the wrong direction. There is money out there if we revisit the time for a dime, raising the uh, penny a pint for malt beverage privilege fee. It's thousands and thousands of dollars that we are losing. It's time the industry pays their fair share of the fallout for our families and, and the cost for rehab, etc. Marianne, if we maintain our current government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? The Portland Bureau of Planning and Sustainability. I have the highest respect for Andre Bach, who challenged the claim that residential infill program is the only way to achieve housing affordability. No one has mentioned the MFI 30%. No one knows that 30% is your gross check before taxes, et cetera, are paid, your utilities, your food, your housing. The real solution is to provide more housing density appropriately priced for low income earners living close to uh, services like town centers and long transit corridors. Yes, this includes the ADUs and tiny houses located in single dwelling zoned neighborhoods. The city council must pursue the neighborhood specific goals in Portland's comprehensive plan. Thank you. How would you address this public significant concerns about police and community relations, use of deadly force, and officer accountability. My heart goes out to the deceased families, their friends or co-workers left in grief and shock. Also the officers involved. Using deadly force and office accountability is up to the grand jury and then the judge. As for the police and community relations, I hold the police officers in highest regards for keeping teddy bears in their car, for delivering sunshine food boxes to those in need, for taking time to assist someone with mental health breakdown, and that happened in front of my house recently, and yet the officers, to make sure the female officer was okay, that I was okay, they was a backup. We have the best uh, police officers in, in the area. and. Um, and I've read Cop Watch. I have followed it. We don't need dictators and people screaming and yelling as I feel I'm doing now. We have time to listen and talk to each other and do some problem solving. I have the highest regard for the current city council members. And I know they have a difficult time 
trying to address everyone's needs, but we need to stop and really listen. Thank you. Thank you. And our last question is about city parks. The system faces serious financial challenges and even more so with the pandemic and closures. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our well-loved parks? Honestly, it's not going to happen unless we really worked hard to change this form of government. Because when I studied the city budget, I'd love to have those um, graphs when I took statistics with the dingling bell curves. When you read them and see how little money goes into parks, that's a start. And I do have an idea for raising the money. We could start by going back to the city golf courses with a membership fee. For $1,000, a member could have a lifetime golfing uh, for $5 or $5 a year. That, um, and we could lower the rate for people that are retired now. They need the outside activity. And if they maybe paid $5 as they do nine holes, that would be helpful. For years, the, when you go into the study, for years the golf course fees were used as an ATM in other parts of the city as evidenced by the uh, pool roofs that weren't roofed. And there's a whole long list of where a Fix Our Parks came into play. I am very grateful that Amanda Fritz took that on. Even though I knew it would take longer to find money to build the recreation center at Southeast 12th and Stark Street. Be, with her Fix the Park, and Nick and I had this conversation many times, we'd have to wait until it expired. It has expired. But now with East Portland in dire need of parks, Cully neighborhood, neighborhoods all over the city have not really had their voice in the decisions now made by um, Parks Foundation. And when you look at their guide, they've already strongly suggested who they would support taking those chairs in city council. I don't know how Parks Foundation is taking the lead for Portland Parks and Recreation Planners. And I think we need to address that. To me, I really want to take that apart with a pickle fork. There's something wrong here. Thank you. You have about one minute left, Marianne. There was something you wanted to return to. Please go ahead. Yes, please. Um, I'd like to go back to that beer, um, Penny a Pint. And I want you to know that a 10 cent per pint increase would have provided more than $80 million. And that's going back when Kulagowski was president. That's going back when the Coalition to Reduce Underage Drinking, and I lobbied with them to make this happen. And the money would have been uh, targeted for substance abuse prevention, treatment and recovery, and law enforcement. At the time, there was one sheriff in 300 miles on the coast range. $900 million of your stat dollar, state dollars are paid into human services each year because of alcohol and other drug problems. It is time the beer industry pays its fair share to the social and economic cost of its product. And these thank, little things. Thank you, Marianne. I'm going to have to cut you off. I'm sorry. Yes. We're out of time. I'll, I'll do my close. This has been Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org for information about all the races that you're voting upon. And exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.